talk about it. I was very tired of that bank account showing zero, 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 zero. Shopping just wasn't my thing, cause it couldn't be. Sus, I was that friend that was always asking where we're going, what time, and I needed to look at the menu before we got there because who was about to be spending money? Uh, what's good y'all, welcome back to the back, to the back, to the back, to the back, to another video. If you read the title, then you already know it is time to exit our broke girl era and enter our rich one. I've definitely had my share of mess ups and I had my share of financial wins. With that being said, I'm going to give you guys all the tips that really helped me exit my broke era and enter a lane where money doesn't stress me out. Hello? Yep, it's money, call it. <laughs> Because I got it now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Call you later. But let's go ahead and get right into these tips. Tip number one is stop saying you're broke, sis. This was me. Every single day, I'm like, I'm broke. I'm broke. I am broke. I said it so much that I literally became stuck in my broke era. Like I tell you guys often, there is power in words. You must stop speaking that over your life. The more that you say you are broke, Number one, you close your mind off to ideas of abundance. And two, you already spoke that out into the world and over your life. So you will remain broke. Let's switch that up a little bit and start saying I'm wealthy. The money I desire is coming. God has my finances in his hands. Changing the way you talk about money or talk about your finances will literally help you shift your mindset and your perspective about money. Now this next one though, this next one is going to shock some of y'all. Saving too much. Now, let me explain. I was saving too much where my money wasn't growing past whatever I was putting in my bank account. There were opportunities for me to invest in myself, in my career, and had the potential of making more money, but I was holding on to money so tight that I was scared to see any type of funds leave. With this being said, I kept myself in the same situation. Tip number three is not budgeting or having a financial plan. This is a no, 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 no. You have to know where your money is going. Once I began to budget, I seen that I was spending hundreds of dollars each month on eating out or just unnecessary expenses. Being able to see things written down, see a plan in front of you, see where the money is coming in and seeing where the money is going out will allow you to move things around a little bit, figure out what expenses you can cut back on, figure out the areas where you need to save, figure out the areas where you need to invest. Budgeting literally changed the game for me, okay? This next one, your girl is still guilty of, okay? Like, sometimes I'm a little too cheap, okay? Like that $10 dress? Mm-mm, <laughs> mm-mm. What a $5 one at. Not buying poor quality or cheap things all the time to save money. Hint, I said all the time. There are cases where you can get away with buying the cheaper option, but there are other moments where cheap items means poor quality, meaning wear and tear will come quicker and easier, and then you'll catch yourself buying that exact same product all over again. This was something I struggled with in the beginning. I wanted to save a coin so much that I would go with the cheaper option, not really understanding that two weeks from now, I would have to buy it again because it was going to break down or the, or the clothes was going to have wear and tear, one wash, and it's gone. Tip number five is have an emergency fund. When I tell you a transparency moment, my brand new car that I just bought in January broke down on me last month. If I didn't have an emergency fund for unexpected things, AKA emergencies, this next tip, I'm gonna have to break it down, but give me a moment since like, I see you catching an attitude already like, girl, hurry up. I'm about to get to it. So this next tip is stop budgeting actual and budget estimated. What I mean by this is that if my check was going to be $3,000, I would literally budget at $3,000 in the past. But I learned that that was kind of biting me a little bit. Like I said, unexpected things happen. Sometimes your check may be more, sometimes your check may be shorter. There may be extra household items you need to buy, extra groceries. Maybe your friend wants to go out to eat, like whatever the case may be. I realized that if I placed my budget a little lower and said my check was going to be $2,800, then I had $200 wiggle room. Meaning that if there was extra things I needed or maybe little fun things I wanted to quickly do, I was able to do that without it impacting me financially and with it already being in my budget. Does that make sense? This is another one that your friend, I'm not gonna point any fingers, is 
guilty of. If you don't have the money in your bank account or in your hand, do not spend it. I got so caught up in using Klarna, Afterpay, Zip, all of these buy now, pay later because your girl thought she was going to what? Pay later. But then when it came time to pay later, I quickly realized I done racked up so much that I was spending hundreds of dollars out of every single paycheck trying to pay down Klarna's, Zips, Affirms, you name it, I used it. Next tip is stop closing yourself off to the ideas of earning extra income. I had to be open to the other ideas of making money. Not only would I potentially find a new love and a new craft, but those other forms of income could literally change my life. And also millionaires have multiple sources of income. This is a fact. So sis, the next tip is to stop idolizing money. If we idolize something, God is not going to give us more of it because he wants to be the top priority in our lives. I had to learn that the hard way. Therefore, we have to understand that God controls money. He gives and he can take it away. Why not put the thought and your need and your hope for more finances, more abundance, financially freedom in God's hands. Allow him to give it to you when the time is right. Some of us are asking for more money, but we don't have the skills to manage it. If God gave us more at this very moment, some of us will fumble the ball. So be glad that he has a perfect time to bless you. I truly believe that each and every person watching this video will be blessed financially. They will be able to break generational curses over their family financially during the set time that God has in place for you. So let's make sure we're praying over our finances, we're covering them, and we're giving them completely to God. And last but not least, girl, but those are all the tips I have for you guys today. Those are all of the habits that really helped me exit my broke era. With that being said, I really, really hope you guys enjoy this video. Like I told you guys earlier, I speak nothing but peace, prosperity, and financial freedom on everyone that is watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, let us know what other tips you may have for us. Share with your friends, with your family. We are on the way to five k subscribers and we will get there i love you guys so so much thank you for all your support and i'll see you in my next video bye